Hi everybody, welcome back to Carolyn's Life. I'm Carolyn, and today I'm gonna show you guys some recent books that I got from the library and from my PO box. The first one is this Lisa C book called what, Mindy? The Island of Sea Women. And what is it? Let me read the back. <laughs> Miha and Young Sook, two girls living on the Korean island of Jeju, are best friends that come from very different backgrounds. When they are old enough, they begin working in the sea with their village's all-female diving collective, led by Young Sook's mother. As the girls take up their positions as baby divers, they realize that they are beginning a life of excitement and responsibility, but also of danger. Little do the friends know that after surviving hundreds of dives and developing the clo the closest of bonds, forces outside of their control will push their friendship to the breaking point. It reminded me of The Way of Water. <laughs> oh, I remember that movie. I didn't want to read the book. Which it was, I don't know. I didn't know there was a book. I just, that, that, that's what it sounded like on the preview. And this one's supposed to be, because if you like Fourth Wing, you're supposed to like this one, which I really enjoyed Fourth Wing when I read it recently. In my other video, you'll, you'll know that I read that. So, what's this one about, Minnie? It's called The Three Dark Crowns by Kendar Kandar Blake. Can't say it, sorry. Well, you should probably read the inside because the back's not much. It's a little flappy do, maybe. Okay. In every generation on the island of Fenneburn, a set of triplets is born. Three queens, all equal heirs to the crown and each possessor of a coveted magic. Marabella is a fierce elemental, able to spark hungry flames or vicious storms at the snap of her fingers. Catherine is a poisoner, one who can ingest the deadliest poison without so much a stomach ache. It and, sounds kind of creepy. And huh? Arsinoe, I can't say her name, a naturalist, is said to have the ability to bloom the reddest rose and control the fiercest of lions. But becoming the queen crowned isn't solely a matter of royal birth. Each sister has to fight for it. And it's not just a game of win or lose. It's life or death. The night the sisters turn 16, the battle begins. The last queen standing gets the crown. So that reminds me of the, the fourth thing because of the, like, the trial by, with the dragons. Because they either made it or they died. So I thought I'd give that a try again, because I tried to read it one time, but it really wasn't in a fantasy mood. And these are two that I got off of Pango. Yeah, they're her books. They're not from the from library. My, from my Pango account, because somebody else bought books. So thank you, so I can get more books. The Marlow Murder Club. She likes these murder books. <laughs> I'm scared to stay with her now. Okay, let's see what it says. <sighs> To solve an impossible murder, you need an impossible hero. 77-year-old Judith Potts is blissfully happy. She lives alone in a faded mansion in Marlow, sets crosswords for the times, and there's no man in her life to tell her what to do or how much whiskey to drink. <laughs> One evening, while out swimming in the Thames, I think I said that right, Judith Judith witnesses a brutal murder. When the local police don't believe her story, Judith and two unlikely friends decide to investigate for themselves. Together, they are the Marlow Murder Club. But soon, another body turns up, and it seems that a real-life serial killer is at work. Now the puzzle they set out to solve has become a trap from which they might never escape. This kind of reminded me of that other series that I was reading earlier that I said was like the Midsummer Murder Club. And that's why I picked that one. And this one just sounds really interesting to me. It's about retired serial killer ladies. And this is her like, book. It's not and, from the library. And thank you for people that bought off my pango because then I can get these kind of books. Because, yeah. The killer murder books. <laughs> okay, I'm going to read the insert. Older women often feel invisible, but sometimes that's their secret weapon. 
They spent their lives as the deadliest assassins in a clandestine, like secret, international organization. But now they are 60 years old. Four female friends can't just retire. It's kill or be killed in this action-packed, action-packed thriller by best-selling and an Edgar Award nominated author Deanna Rayburn. Let me read the rest. Billy, Mary Alice, Helen, and Natalie have worked for the museum, an elite network of assassins for 40 years. Does that not sound like four grandma's names? Billy, okay. Mary Alice, maybe Mary Alice and Helen, but not Natalie and Billy. Yeah. Billy's like a tomboy and Natalie is like the, yeah. Okay, now their talents are considered old school and no one appreciates what they have to offer in any in an age that relies more on technology than people skills. When the foursome is sent on an all expense paid vacation to mark their retirement, they are targeted by one of their own. On only the board, the top level members of the museum can order the termination of failed agents and the women realize they've been marked for death. Now to get out alive, they have to turn against their own organization, rely on experience and one another to get the job done. Knowing that working together is the secret to their survival, they are about to teach the board what it really means to be a woman and a killer of a certain age. Killer of a certain uh, age. And it sounded kind of fun and like spies and yeah. So I thought I'd try it. This one, I just thought the cover looked cool. I've seen other people read it on the booktube. I don't know library. where I saw it, but and I found it at the library, so it was like, yay. Okay, the club. There's no place like home. The home group is a glamorous collection of celebrity members. Clubs dotted across the globe, where the rich and famous can party hard and then crash out in its five-star suites. Far from the prying eyes of fans and the media. The most spectacular of all is Island Home, a closely guarded, ultra luxurious resort just off the English coast. And its three day launch party is easily the most coveted A list invite of the decade. But behind the scenes, tensions are at breaking point. The ambitious and expensive project has pushed the home group CEO and his long suffering team to their absolute limits. All of them have something to hide. And that's before the beautiful people with their own ugly secrets ever set foot on the island. As tempers fray and behaviors worsen, behavior worsens, as things get more sinister by the hour and the body count piles up, some of the island's home members will begin to wish they'd never made the guest list. Because at this club, if your name is on the list, you're not getting out. It, re it, remi what? it reminds me of, what's that movie? Not the Silver Spoon. What was that movie with the, were the secret spies? It just came out the, not the, the one where the girl pukes a lot in the first one. I don't remember. I don't know. Help us, the internet. Help. Help us. It, it, it reminded me of that of that movie though. The one that my brain is gone blank. The, the, the. Not thieves. Something thieves. No. Oh, Knives Out is Knives what out. is what it reminded me of. Knives Out. It's kind of got that. Knives Out. Okay. Similar kind of premise thing. Knives Out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this book feels so nice, so pretty. This one is another one that's supposed to be it's so pretty. Similar to, um, Sorry, I think, to the, the cover. to the uh, the fourth wing, which I was like obsessed with. So I gotta see what this fourth we'll wing see. is. Keep your hand right. Is it a book? Yeah. Is it a good book? Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, we'll go over here. Okay. It's called Divine Rival. When two young rival journalists find love through a magical connection, they must face the depths of hell in a war between gods to seal their fate forever. After centuries of sleep, the gods are warring again. But 18-year-old Iris Winnow just wants to hold her family together. 
Her mother is suffering from addiction and her brother is missing from the front lines. Her best bet is to win the columnist promotion at the Oath Gazette. To combat her worries, Iris writes letters to her brothers and slips them beneath her wardrobe door where they vanish into the hands of Roman Kit, her cold and handsome rival at the paper. When he anonymously writes Iris back, the two of them forge a connection that will follow Iris all the way to the front lines of battle. For her brother, the fate of mankind in love. Divine Rivals is an epic enemies to loves fantasy novel filled with hope and heartbreak and the unparalleled power of love. I almost said love. Well, I thought it'd be it's a pretty a, cover. A fun, I read just based on the fun, cover. A fun story. And I like the cover, and everybody's been talking about this one too. And just, so, I love the way it's just library. And, and I, I love the library covers. I know it's, it drives some people crazy. But, I like it. It feels but good. I, I like the. I, it's smooth. It's smooth. Yeah, I like it. So there's that one. Oh, it looks mm -hmm. nice. Okay, it was recommended to me because of the fourth wing. These books are thick. This is another one that was on the list for fourth. If you like fourth wing, try this thing. So we're gonna try it and see what happens. It's called We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Fazel. <laughs> okay. Try, pardon me, I'm trying to read it. Just I get my eyes get wonky. <laughs> People lived because she killed. People died because he lived. Okay. Zephyra, uh, Zephyra, I hope I said that, is the hunter disguising herself as a man when she braves the cursed force of the Rs to feed her people. Nazar is the prince of death, assassinating those foolish enough to defy his autocratic father, autocratic father, the Sultan. If Zafira is exposed as a girl, all of her achievements will be rejected. So it reminds me of Mulan, kind of. Oh, yeah. Sort of. Yeah, she had to protect you. Yeah, I haven't seen the whole movie, but yeah, I need to watch it. If Nazar displays his compassion, his father will punish him in the most brutal of ways. Both Zafira and Nazar are legends in the kingdom of Ariwa. <laughs> but neither wants to be. War is brewing and the R sweeps closer with each passing day, engulfing the land in shadow. While Zafira embarks on a quest to uncover a lost artifact that can restore magic to her suffering world and stop the Rs. Nasser is sent by the Sultan on a similar mission. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but... I don't know. Like, if I'm, it's like, ARZ. I don't know Rs. Airs? <laughs> Anyways. All I can think of is that stupid meme with the pirates. <laughs> we go, R. R. <laughs> Nazar is sent by the I'll read again. Nazar sent by the Sultan on a similar mission. Retrieve the artifact and kill the hunter. But an ancient silver oh sorry, an ancient evil stirs as they as their journey unfolds, and the prize they seek may pose a threat greater than either can imagine. Set in a richly detailed world inspired by an ancient Arabia, we hunt the flame is a gripping Debut of discovery, con conquering, oh, queering, conquering fear, and <laughs> taking identity into your own hands. Sorry, well, guys. Well, yeah. So it's kind of like a cross between Aladdin and 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 Mulan. Mulan, maybe. Now this one I didn't know. I just saw the cover. Thick, and, and but look book. at the cover's got like a castle and some cl clouds. Cuckoo, cuckoo, or it's not cuckoo. <laughs> Cuckoo spelled differently, so it must be cloud cuckoo. cuckoo. Maybe it is cuckoo. Mm. I don't know. Cuckoo land. But I saw the cover and was like, "That looks cool." Alexa, how do you pronounce the book "Cloud Cuckoo Land"? From Airmail.News, the 600-plus page "Cloud Cuckoo Land" composed of it a is cuckoo. Of short Alexa, shut up. It is cuckoo. Okay, so cloud cuckoo land. I'm spelling it spelled this. But the cover is cool because it's got yeah. like. I don't know if I can read this word. Okay, I'm gonna read again. We need to get sick of something. I've got my face dry. 
Wait, doesn't your can look like looks it like, looks it's like, like beer? <laughs> kind of looks like beer, huh? If you just kind of look at it. Is that what you're gonna say? Yeah, mm -hmm. it looks like like bush light or something. Or Bud Light. Or Bud Light when mm -hmm. I was a kid. <laughs> not that I'm promoting underage drinking. But we're not that. underage. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. No, when you're a kid, okay. But I don't want to promote that. No. But no, when we were a kid, it just looked like it because yeah. because that's the style back then. We, not that yeah. we were drinking, the parents were drinking. Mm -hmm. She just saw the can. Yeah. Set in Constantinople. Constantinople, maybe? Can okay, Constantinople. I can't say that. Sorry, guys. <laughs> in the 15th century, in a small town in present-day Idaho, and mm -hmm. on an interstellar ship decades from now, Anthony Doerr's gorgeous third novel is a triumph of imagination and compassion, a soaring story about children on the cusp of adulthood in worlds in peril, peril, who find resilient, resilience hope, and a book. In Cloud Cuckoo Land, Doer has created a magnificent tape, tapestry of times and places that reflects our vast interconnectedness with our species, with each other, with those who live before us, and with those who will be here after we are gone. 13-year-old Anna, an orphan, lives inside the Formidable walls of Constantinople, Constantinople, a <laughs> house of women who make their living embroidering the robes of priests, restless, insatiably curious. I mess up there. Anna learns to read, and in this ancient city, famous for the library, she finds a book, the story of Athon, who longs to be turned into a bird so that he can fly to a utopian paradise in the sky. This she reads to her ailing sister as the walls of the only place she has known are bombarded in the great siege, 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 siege of Constantinople. Constantinople. I'm happy you say that word from now on. <laughs> Outside the walls is Omer, a village boy, miles from home, conscripted with... Uh, he's drafted into the army or something? With his beloved oxen into the invading army. His path and Anna's will cross. Okay, okay, one more paragraph. 500 years later, in a library in Idaho, octogenarian Zeno, who learned Greek as a prisoner of war, rehearses five children in a play. Adaptation of Athian story. And I think an octogenarian... Genarian. <laughs> a lot of words in here. I can't pronounce. <laughs> is a like person that studies libraries or something. I think I may be wrong, but that's what I think it is. Athian story preserved against all odds through centuries. Tucked among the library shelves is a bomb planted by troubled, idealistic teenager Seymour. This is another siege. And in a not so distant future, on the interstellar ship Argos, Constance is alone in a vault, copying on scraps of saking the story of Athon, told by her father. She has never set foot on our planet. Like Marie, Laurie, and Werner in all the light, we cannot see Anna O'Meara Seymour. Zena and continue on back flap. I can't just do it on back flap. Well, basically. Too many big words. <laughs> you have to continue the back flap when you read it. Anyway, I thought the cover looked really cool and I didn't really know what it was about, but the cover looked really cool. So I thought we'd give it a try. Anyway, that's my library haul and I'll see you guys next video. Remember, you're enough. Like and subscribe.